Hello and welcome back. Today's video, I will be ranking the palettes that I bought this year. I will be ranking them from least favorite to most favorite, although I do really like all of these. This is 17 palettes, which means I did buy 17 palettes this year. Honestly, that is a lot. I do want to reduce that for sure in the future. However, like I said, I do like everything that I got, but yeah, I know 17, it's a little bit much. Did get some of these with Ulta points and some other ones I did get on sale. Also, I have a lot of ranking videos. I have ranked my Juvia's palettes. I've ranked all of my eyeshadow palettes. I ranked some new palettes. I have a whole playlist if you're interested in seeing that. And let's get into this ranking. Number 17 and my least favorite palette, although I do still like it, is the Natasha Denona Mini Nude. There is nothing wrong with this palette. The quality is very, very nice. You've got three more metallic shades, two matte shades. However, it's more limiting. Um, there aren't a ton of looks I can do with this, although I love combining palettes and I really should use this more as I like the quality, but there's nothing overly special about it in my opinion. Number 16 is the Pinky Rose Exotic Peacock. I love this color story, which is why I really wanted this eyeshadow palette. The purples, the blues, they are so pretty. However, the reason this is ranking low is the quality. It is hard to work with. The mattes are really hard to blend and the shimmers, they are chunky. They take a lot of layering to be built up to be metallic, however, I keep this around in my collection because I love the colors so much. When I do a look with it, it does turn out nice. It just takes a lot more work to get there. It's a similar story with number 15, which the, is the e.l.f. 18 Hit Wonders. This one is a lot less expensive though. This is only $14. The Pinky Rose one was $25, by the way. Um, this is also harder to work with, but honestly, it's not as hard to work with as the Pinky Rose one. I love the colors in here. Every time I do a look with this, I love the way it turns out, but some of the shades are a little chunky, these shimmers here, and the mattes are extremely powdery. However, it does work out. It just takes more work, but I do really, really like the colors. Number 14 is this Juvia's palette. This is the Warrior 3. This one, the quality is amazing. I really, really like it. It's obviously very, very colorful, so I have to be in a really colorful mood to use this. I don't love blue shimmers and both of these are blue shimmers. I thought this was going to be more of a gray, but on the eyes, it looks extremely similar to this one. I do have a whole review video on this palette and the quality is fantastic. I love Juvia's Place. Um, I just don't love that they selected two blue shimmers and the rest are mattes. I think more variety here and then maybe like a pink shimmer would have gone really well, but I do still really like this and it is in the usual Juvia's Place quality. Next up is a very old school palette that I did repurchase earlier this year. This is the original Lorac Pro palette. I had this when it first came out and I actually finished half the palette and I eventually got rid of it. It was really old. Um, however, I just got nostalgic for it and I bought it when it was on sale at Ulta and I do really like it. I mean, it's not the most unique thing out there and some of the shimmers, they're not as metallic as I would like them to be, but the mattes blend out really easily and I do like the looks that I get with this palette. Number 12 is the Ace Beauté Slice of Paradise. I really think this is a good quality palette. This is $35. I think it's better quality than the Pinky Rose in my opinion. I bought these at the same time when there was a, a sale on Riley Rose at the beginning of the year. This is one of my favorite colorful eyeshadow palettes. I think the quality is really nice. I always love the looks I do with it. It's very colorful though, so it's just not one that I reach for that much, but I do think it's one of my favorite colorful palettes ever. Number 11 definitely surprised me. This is the Maybelline Lemonade Craze. This came out, I think, two years ago. I randomly bought this at Target here this year, and I actually really like it. I think it is really good. It's only $10, and the shimmers are quite metallic. It does take a little building. The mattes are a little sheer. You know, they take some building too, but I really enjoy this color story. I love this um, kind of coral shade. I love the yellow. This shimmer is probably my favorite in the palette. It's really, really nice, and I don't have anything in this exact color story, and I do think it definitely adds to my collection. Number 10, this is the Essence Good Day Sydney palette. This one really caught me by surprise. This is $10, and I got it Ulta on sale for, I think, $8. 
I've talked about this one several times on my channel and I love the quality. The shimmers are amazing. The mattes blend so easily. I don't like that these three colors are so blah and boring. I kind of wish they'd done a little bit more with this row like they did with that row, but the colors are gorgeous. The quality is beyond amazing. I cannot believe that this only costs $10. Number nine is one that I've talked about several times. It's the Milani Soft and Sultry palette. These palettes by Milani vary between $15 to $20. Depends on where you buy them. This is the cool toned one. And I think it is really, really pretty. And I think the quality on these Milani palettes is amazing. Overall, on a day-to-day -day basis though, I am more of a warm toned eyeshadow person. However, I do think that this one is really great and it does have a lot of similarities to the Sultry palette, although not exactly. I would not call them dupes. However, if you want a cool tone neutral palette that is very high quality, I definitely would recommend this one. Number eight, this is the Juvia's Place Warrior II. This one is really, really good and it's much more my color story. It is pretty neutral shades and it is an all matte palette. I really like the variety in this and I feel like I can do a lot of looks with it. I mostly have combined this one with other palettes, but I need to do a look with just this palette because it is really nice and th these two kind of peachy shades are so amazing. I am really impressed. I love the Juvia's Place formula though, so I knew I was going to like it and the fact that it's more neutral and that it's just something more I reach for. Alrighty, number seven. This is the Carity 21 Matte Palette. This one I bought at the very beginning of the year. I honestly wish I had used it more because I love it so much. This again is an all matte palette. I just really like, there's so much variety in here, but it's not a crazy large palette. Actually, considering how many shadows there are, this is quite compact. It is a really nice quality. It is more of a thin formula, so they do take some building. However, for the colorful shades, that's a good thing because it's easy to get too much of a colorful shade on and then it is really difficult to blend. Therefore, I don't have the problem with this one. I actually enjoy that they're more sheer because it's easier to build up a look with it. However, they are still pigmented and there's neutrals, they're colorful shades. This is just a really good palette. This is the Essence Salut Paris. They have a whole series of cities in this. Um, obviously, I have this one and the Good Day Sydney one. The quality is fantastic. I'm just ranking this one higher than the other one because these colors are more interesting to me and more what I prefer. And I think that this one has really nice colors. You've got pinks and mauves here and then greens and a brown there. The looks that you can do with this are quite variable and it's just a really pretty kind of romantic palette. Um, you know, obviously goes with the Paris theme. I really, really like that. And yeah, I also love pink eyeshadow. It's definitely one of my favorite colors to wear. All right, we are in the top five of the palettes that I bought this year. Number five is the Milani Bold Obsessions. I think the quality on this one and the soft and sultry are exactly the same, incredibly high quality. Mattes are very easy to blend. Packaging, A+. I just like these colors more than the soft and sultry one. You've got a gold, you've got maroons. You do have a few cool tones over here. You've kind of got that basic, you know, warm brown color. Um, yeah, I just really like this one. The quality is fantastic, and I'm just ranking it higher than the soft and sultry because I like the colors more. Number four, Urban Decay Born to Run. I'm sure you likely thought this would be in the top five. I've talked about this a lot on my channel this year, and I really, really enjoy it. The formula is really nice. The metallics are super metallic and the mattes are so easy to blend. I had not bought an Urban Decay palette in quite a long time just because I used to own the Naked palettes and then I just discovered I prefer other formulas over them. That's why I kind of stopped buying them. But with this one, I think they've really improved their formula from you know five years ago. And I really like the variety on this one too. I kind of like this type of palette a lot, if you can tell. One with some colors in it, but a lot of neutrals as well. I kind of like that 50-50 mix. That's just more the type of looks that I go for on a regular basis. And yeah, this is really nice quality and I also love the colors. All right, we are in the top three and honestly, I'm definitely surprised by this. I think I have kind of changed my favorites throughout the year a little bit. Number three is the BH Royal Affair. I kind of can't believe I'm ranking this before the Urban Decay Born to Run. 
but I do really, really like this one and the quality is beyond all anything. This is so nice. You do get some colorful shades with a lot of warm tones and cool tones. I don't know, there's just something about this color story I really, really like. I bought this for $8 at a Marshalls, which is crazy. Sadly, they have discontinued this, but I've heard a lot of people say that they are still seeing these at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. I love the BH formula. I do also have the Weekend Festival palette. That's what I'm actually wearing today. I bought that one last year though, but I love their formula and yeah, this is amazing. Alrighty, number two. This surprises me so much, Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. So if you saw when I first bought this, I did a ranking new eyeshadow palettes video and I had put this in last place. I said that I liked it, but the shimmers are more difficult to work with. And I still stand to that. I did talk about this in a recent favorites video. Shimmers are a little chunky and harder to work with. However, once I use a wet brush, I have to layer them up a bit, tap off the excess, all that jazz. But the looks I get with this, I absolutely love. It is a neutral palette, obviously, but it has a little bit of something extra and it has some variety. You do have some cool tones here, warm tones here, kind of a coral, kind of a gold, this pinky color. I don't know, I think it has more variety than a lot of other neutral palettes on the market and the mattes are so nice. I mean, these are some of the best mattes I have in my whole collection, which is just crazy. But yeah, this is something I've definitely grown to love over time. At first I thought it was only okay, but now I absolutely love it. I am willing to work with eyeshadows a little bit more if the end result is that much better. Number one, you may have guessed it, the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. It is kind of funny that my least favorite was Natasha Denona and my most favorite is Natasha Denona. They're the only two palettes by her that I own, but this one, the quality goes above and beyond. I do think it is a much higher quality than the mini nude, although there's nothing wrong with the mini nude, but this is better for some reason. I have a whole review video on this one and I went in depth on it, but I just think that these matte shades are beyond all blendable. The cream to powder formula is so unique. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. These metallics are most metallic metallic shadows I own. It's just really good quality. The colors, as you can tell, they're not that unique, like I've said before, but there is just something about the quality that is worth $129. I did pay full price for this. It's the most expensive makeup product I've ever bought by a lot of money. However, I don't regret it and I really, really like Alrighty, it. Alrighty, that is it for this video. I have ranked all of the palettes that I have bought this year. I do really like all of these. The ones at the end, I just don't think they're quite as good as some of the other ones. If you are interested, I have a whole ranking makeup playlist. That is it for this video and thank you for watching.